Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create water ripples in After Effects based on a few handy tricks I've learned. Okay, we're going to create a new composition. We're going to make a square comp, 1920 by 1920. So let's select the ellipse tool, set our fill color to black, and set our stroke color to white. And we're going to set the pixel size to about 10 pixels. We're going to create a bunch of circles that will mimic the look of uh, sea foam or you know, water ripples, um, starting from the center and making our way outwards. Uh, deselect that circle by pressing V and press Q again to reselect the shape tool. And we're going to repeat that a bunch of times. And it's important that they're all on their own separate layers. Cool, something like that. Um, next, we're going to uh, add a wiggle to the position. Let's make that one and 20. Uh, and then, and let's do the same for the scale. Uh, one, one and 20 again. Sweet. Then we're going to uh, click on the position and scale and right click and copy expression only and select the other circles and control V paste. Um, that should give, put the wick a lot in all of the shapes. Great. Next thing we want to do is pre-comp everything. Control Shift C, uh, call this ripples. We're going to add a positional keyframe. Let's do three and six seconds. And let's move these ripples down. This will be our wave movement as it's pushing back and forth. Then make another circle, position it towards the upper half of the frame, and then keyframe the size to scale up and down over the six seconds. Then duplicate your layer. Uh, we'll call this wave line and wave mat. Set the mat layer to stencil alpha and the line mat, let's get rid of the fill. And so you'll see the circle is now acting as a stencil mat leaving everything inside the circular area still visible. Let's also just add a trim paths to the wave line. Set the start to 25 and the end to 75. This will trim the shape of the circle so that only the bottom hemisphere is visible, acting as the front of our wave. And now for the fun part. Uh, we're gonna add a adjustment layer and add a extract effect which will cut out the black from our ripples. Add a fill and set it to white just to get rid of those black edges we can see. Then add a turbulent displace. Alt click the evolution and add an expression time times 100 so that it's evolving over time. Then add a fast box blur, set that to 10. Then we're going to add a levels. We're going to select the alpha channel and use these handles to crunch uh, the alpha mat down to the desired area. You see it's like kind of solidifying and blending and merging together where there's um, gaps and holes and um, ad adjoining areas and we're starting to get that nice ripple effect. So you could kind of adjust this so that it's more solid or there's nicer gaps. Um, this feels actually pretty good because it's quite organic. That's working pretty well. Um, so if we wanted to add some finishing touches, we could duplicate the wave line, control D twice. Uh, the first one, let's set the thickness uh, to maybe 15. So it's a little more visible. Um, and then that second copy, we could offset the time so that we get a nice offset kind of uh, secondary ripple. Uh, in fact, we could probably do that twice. You could also duplicate those two layers, drag them underneath and set their layer style to uh, silhouette alpha. So it's actually cutting out anything below those layers and delay that just by a frame. So it's getting a nice secondary interaction with the ripples underneath. One last thing I wanna show you is adding a displacement map that can give a little extra distortion. Let's make a copy of our wave line, paste that at the top of our comp and pre-comp it. We'll call this uh, displacement map. 
Let's create a new solid and set it to gray by making it 50% black. Place that at the bottom of our comp. Add a fast blur to our waveline. Let's put the blur radius to something like 25 and let's increase the stroke thickness as well. Duplicate that layer and uh, set the stroke color to black. And let's offset the time of that slightly. So there's a little bit of overlap between the two. And you can see we've got this black and white channel which will be acting as our displacement map. Let's jump back to our main comp and hide the displacement layer. Um, let's make a new adjustment layer just above the ripples and add a displacement map. Set the layer to the displacement map and adjust the horizontal and vertical displacement maps to luminance. So you can see where the black and white mat is. The white and black channels are each telling the displacement to go up and down or left and right, depending on uh, how much displacement we want to apply. I think something like 50 or somewhere between 20 and 50 is probably a good amount just for a subtle amount of dis distortion behind that front wave. Um, you could potentially even uh, feather, feather out these maps further to get a larger distortion area. And that's almost done. I'll quickly run through the last few steps to finalize our wave. Let's pre-comp all of our layers. Control Shift C. Let's call it Wave Comp. Let's find that comp in our project, duplicate it and rename it to Wave Fill. Let's drag that in underneath. Um, let's jump inside the Wave Fill Comp. Let's select the adjustment layer and the wave mat layer. I'll drag them to the top of our comp and let's delete all the other layers there. Set the wave mat mode to normal. And in our adjustment layer, let's switch off the uh, extract. So now if we uh, toggle the transparency background, we should have a mat that we can use to add color to our water. Let's jump back out to the main comp, um, add a new solid, control Y. Let's make a sand color. Select our wave fill and let's add a gradient ramp. Let's set the end color to the sand and let's add a little bit of blue to the uh, start color. Select the wave fill comp, let's duplicate it and make a copy underneath. Uh, set the layer mode to multiply and press T and let's set the transparency to 25%. We're then going to add a echo effect. We're going to set the number of echoes to 20, add the decay to 0.9 and set the echo operator to minimum. This will create a nice soft edge of where we see the tide ebbing away. And that's pretty much it. If you found this tutorial useful, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know what else you might like to see as a tutorial. And please follow and subscribe for more.